How's it going beekeepers? I'm Gene Renee and I want to talk to you today about upgrading your workshop if you're going to start building a lot of bee boxes and beekeeping equipment. Now if you've been able to build some equipment just with the basic stuff like a hammer and a handsaw and just like a square, just basic tools, what I want to talk to you about today is if you want to start upgrading your shop or your workspace so that you can start building more beehive equipment. So we're talking about power equipment. So I'm going to give you my list of top five tools that I recommend that you get and I'm going to list them in the order that I feel is most important. At least when it comes to my projects, this is the order that I bought these things in as my budget allowed. Now speaking of budget, just real quick, most of my tools are secondhand tools and you can get some really good deals on Facebook Marketplace or even Craigslist or yard sales. That's where I get a lot of my stuff. So I do highly recommend you shop around in that area, especially if you're on a budget. So let's get into it and talk about number one. Well, number one, if you're going to go into power tools, this should be your number one priority right here, the proper safety equipment or PPE, personal protection equipment. Always make this your number one rule because it, when you start using power tools and machines and stuff like that, the weirdest things will start happening because a little piece of a wood or metal will fly towards your face. And I can tell you from experience that I've had pieces of uh, wood or metal fly towards my face almost every year that I'm in a building project. And this has saved me, just these goggles, th these goggles have saved me so many times, um, wear them. And, and by all means, uh, whatever the equipment is that you're using, whatever it calls for as far as safety equipment, just use it. Because I'll tell you, it's a whole lot easier to do beehive inspections when you got all your fingers and you got both eyes. So make personal protection equipment your number one priority. Okay. So the next piece of equipment that I highly recommend that's beyond, you know, towards the top of your must-have list is a really good table saw. Now, don't think you have to buy the most expensive one. The first table saw I bought was on Craigslist, and I think I paid $100. It was like $80 or $100. And I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the thing about a table saw is you don't have to lay out a lot of cash but what you do want is a table saw that has a good fence, all right? If you have a saw with a fence that wobbles around, even just a little bit, an eighth of an inch, it's going to throw off all your cuts. So when you look for a table saw, make sure that it has a nice square fence on it. That's going to make life so much easier as you start to put your pieces of equipment together. Now, when you, uh, for example, when you're building uh, boxes for bees and you want them to stack nice and tight on top of one another. You don't want them to have any kind of wobble or gaps in there. You want everything to be nice and square. So that is very important. I've seen cheap table saws with nice fences. So that's real important. Don't buy a, a saw unless it has a nice accurate fence. Now sometimes you can upgrade and get a new fence for an existing saw. So anyway, I struggled for a long time with, uh, I'm going to show you this saw. I struggled a long time with this one particular saw because the fence moves. So I have to be careful. If I ever use it, I have to take a square and line it up and then I can go ahead and make my cuts. It's kind of a pain and it gets old after a while. So a, a saw doesn't have to be expensive with a really good, accurate fence on it. It must be square. That's going to make... A, that's a game changer. So make sure that's that's how you um, shop for a saw. Number four is a miter saw, a power miter saw. And this is the one that I use and it's great for cutting uh, your boards into the proper lengths that you need. So that's that's a very good item to have. The next item is an air stapler. So obviously you're gonna need an air compressor. Uh, you don't have to buy the biggest one they make or anything else, but this is the one that I use. It doesn't have to be the same brand, but it uses various size staples. And most of my equipment is put together with the staples and glue. In fact, let me tell you about the glue I recommend. For beekeeping, 
I recommend the Type Bond 3. Type Bond 2 is okay, but Type Bond 3 is more for outdoor equipment. So this is the one that I use and a lot of other beekeepers use it too. So as long as it's a good weather rated glue, you're probably fine. What you want to watch out for is the off gassing. Sometimes you can get off gassing with glues. So you don't want that for your bees and this one is very uh, good for being around uh, food or anything that you know you don't want to get contaminated. So if you're practicing natural beekeeping, you're going to want to use something like Type on 3. That's what I use. If I find something better or if you know of something better, by all means share it with us so that we can put the word out. Okay, moving on. Let me see. All right. Where did it go? Here it is. All right, the next piece of equipment is a drill. And I love a cordless drill. It's going to save you, you know, a lot of aggravation if you don't have a, a cord on it. So if you can afford one that has the uh, attachable battery and rechargeable battery pack, get yourself a nice drill screwdriver set and uh, it'll make life so much quicker. So if you don't already have one, I highly recommend you do get one. So make, make sure that's on your list. Okay, these are bonus things or additional things that just make life easier in your shop. Um, one of the things that um, I like to do um, is have my workbench on wheels. I can move this anywhere I need in the shop. And I just did this this year. I can't believe I, I've been working all this time with a fixed uh, in place tabletop. And uh, now that I put it on wheels, it's actually become one of the tools in my shop. Because now what I can do is I can put it next to my table saw when I'm making cuts and I can feed large pieces across onto the top of my work table. And as my workshop begins to fill up with beekeeping equipment, uh, usually I build a lot of them at, at, at the same time. So for example, right now I'm building 10 lands hives and they're 20 frame lands hives. So they're going to start to take up a lot of room in here. So what's great is I can just move this table wherever I need to in order to give myself the space I need until I finally can stack them all nice and neat into a corner somewhere. So putting wheels on your table saw or on your workbench, that's gonna be a game changer for you in your workshop. So I highly recommend that. A good tape measure when it comes to building beehive equipment is essential. And the reason why is because we're not constructing large items, but we're building uh, small frames like these here and a lot of times you're dealing with sixteenths of an inch so you're going to want a very accurate tape measure and when you use your tape measure make sure that you don't fall into the bad habit of pulling out the tape and then letting it snap back every time because what will happen is that little tab will start to loosen up and you will be off by about a thirty second to a sixteenth of an inch over time. So when it comes to beehive equipment, you know that is something as small as three eighths of an inch makes a big difference when it comes to beekeeping because that three eighths, remember, is what we call bee space. So if you start going one way or the other on that spacing, it can throw things off. So you wanna have a good tape measure. Okay, the next item that I want to talk to you about that's going to make your life easier in building lots and lots of equipment are the use of jigs. So for example, I have a couple different frame building jigs that I've made and it's a real time saver. So a lot of times you can get the plans for free uh, online. In fact, I have a frame jig that I have the plans for on my website, enjoybeekeeping.com. So when it comes to building Langstroth frames, I can build 10 at a time using this frame jig. So that's a real time saver. So if you combine a frame jig with an air stapler, you're going to be able to build hundreds of frames just in an afternoon. That's the big deal. That, that's huge when it comes to a time saver. Now Dr. Leo, if you're building Lands frames, he has, he has this frame jig on his website and you can also get it from enjoybeekeeping.com as well because I like to use uh, the Layens style beehives 
as well as the frames. And so you can uh, get the plans for the jigs online. Now here's another jig that I made. I don't know if it's really considered to be a jig, but uh, instead of having to grab my square and check all my boxes, what I did was I basically built a square right onto my tabletop. So now, if I'm assembling boxes, I already know that they're square because I've, I've built it around this square and I set my boxes in here as I'm stapling them together. So instead of having to fight with uh, setting this on the table and then lining my boxes up every time, this actually gives me a backstop so that I can push my pieces of wood together and then air, air staple them and it goes real quick. I don't know if anyone else is using something like this. I just did this the other day and it's been a huge time saver and I don't have to worry about all my stuff uh, not being uh, square. It's real important as you're putting your boxes together. Yeah. Okay, so here's one other thing that I recommend if you like to build your own equipment is uh, get a notebook. And when you download plans from either Enjoy Beekeeping or other beekeeper websites, a lot of times you can get free plans, just go ahead and print them out and put them in a three ring binder. That way they don't get destroyed because things happen in the workshop. I, I printed out these plans. It took me three times before I finally got it through my head that I should just print them one time and put them in a notebook. Because what I would do is I would print them up, take them out to the shop and I'd start to do my project. And then by the time I was finished with the project, my plans were destroyed. And then I'd go a few weeks later and build some more and I'd have to reprint them. So print them once, put them in a three ring binder, keep it in your workshop. And then what I like to do is I also add some blank sheets of white paper so that I can make my own notes. So if I make an adjustment or a modification to one of the plans, or if I'm just trying to figure out some mathematics in my head, which I'm not really good at, so I have to draw little pictures for myself. I'll show you this one. It takes me a while to do, but when I have to figure out how many cuts I can get out of a sheet of plywood, I have to draw a little diagram for myself and then write the measurements on there. But hey, at least you only got to do it once if you've got your notes. So this way I can always refer back to them. So this is another time saver for me and I'm sure it'll work for you as well. One other really good tip that I want to share with you is look for uh, lumber that's being tossed out. I get a lot of uh, secondhand lumber from different projects that people are you know, tearing down something or it's just cutoffs. Uh, with beekeeping, a lot of the boxes that we make are small. They're usually smaller than two feet or three feet in length, which is, which is usually what most builders are throwing away. So if they're building houses in your area, you can get some lumber that way. Um, I'll tell you uh, one place where I get a lot of my lumber at a discounted price. I get a lot of three-quarter pine board. I actually, uh, I don't know how I, I met him. I think he had an ad on Craigslist. Okay, that's what it was. Yep. Um, I saw an ad on Craigslist for lumber, and this guy's a furniture builder. And he's got, you know, I, I think he's got like 20 employees or something. Uh, he's about an hour away. So I got to hook up the trailer, and I take a ride up there. But anytime he gets a load of lumber and it gets a little bit of water damage or something like that, it just has some discoloration and he doesn't want to use it anymore, he just sells it super cheap. So if you can get uh, connections like that, so a furniture builder is one of my connections. The other ones that I use are, I look around at job sites if they're constructing any homes in the area and I see a pile of two by sixes or two by tens. I use those for building some of my lay-ins hives or you can even rip down to buy material and you can actually even make frames with it and top bars with it. So there's a lot of uh, short pieces of lumber that are very useful for beekeepers. So almost every single piece of beekeeping equipment that I build, so it doesn't matter if it's a hive body or covers or bottom boards, almost all the wood has been used for something else before it got to me. And that makes me feel pretty good. At least that, that's, that's making a smaller carbon footprint. Um, when you become a beekeeper, you're kind of more in tune with that stuff. And it, it's, it's a good habit to do. And I, I think it's an excellent way to um, use that wood. Because by the time a beekeeper is finished with it, 
Well, now it's probably ready to be burned in a scrap pile or something. But before then, that's some good lumber that you can find. So that's just one of my tips I wanted to share with you. And if you've enjoyed this video, um, hit the subscribe button. I'll try to put out some more um, every couple weeks or so. I try to put out a new video. Let me know what kind of content you're looking for too. I want to give you something that you can use, uh, something that you can go to work with right away. I almost forgot one of the most important things. It's right up there with personal protection equipment. It's good music for the workshop. Without this, it's no fun spending six, seven hours in the shop. So get yourself some good tunes and have fun beekeeping. See you next time, friends.